Και τώρα καλώ τον Νίκο το Θεοχαράκη, τον οποίον βλέπετε εδώ περιγραφόμενο ως πρόεδρο και επιστημονικό διευθυντή του ΚΕΠΕ. Τον έχουμε ζήσει και ως πανεπιστημιακό και ως ιστορία των οικονομικών, αλλά και τον έχουμε παρακολουθήσει στην τελευταία φάση των διαπραγματεύσεων. Ε, βεβαίως όχι διαπραγματεύσεων για το χρέος όπως μου επισήμανε χτες αλλά διαπραγματεύσεων για την διαδικασία προσαρμογής ενώσω πλέον το χρέος είχε τεθεί από την ελληνική πλευρά επάνω στο τραπέζι, στο κέντρο του τραπεζιού. Περιμένω να δω την δική του εισηγήση. Ο κύριος Ελαράκης. Είμαι αφήνω ότι δεν είχα την πρόκειται να βρει την εισπηρήση από την εισπηρήση του Oracle ή πραγματικά χρησιμοποιήσω κάποια medicinal uh, help, as the economist suggested. Uh, the truth is that uh, in uh, my experience in these negotiations, instead of uh, um, using from uh, the intellectual uh, legacy of uh, Greece, uh, Aristotelian logic and Christianian democracy, uh, we had the uh, Zeno's paradox of Achilles and the tortoise and uh, the methods of Procrustes. Uh, now, the thing is that uh, the title is uh, regarding uh, does uh, debt imperil growth? Uh, as Alfred Marshall once observed, there is uh, a result statement in economics is potentially misleading uh, with a, a possible exception of the present one. So, in fact, the relationship between growth and um, debt is one of the most contested issues in political economy. So uh, let me, as a historian of economic thought, uh, say a few things about that role in economic theory. Uh, we have uh, the first uh, discussions on uh, public uh, debt in uh, the middle of the uh, 18th century, uh, when this uh, conservative facet of the Enlightenment called political economy started taking shape when a pre-physiocratic uh, secretary of the famous or infamous John Law, or Jean Las, as they know him in French, published uh, a um, short essay called a Political Essay on Commerce, in which he suggested that uh, all rich countries have a big debt, and also that debt is a very good instrument for growth. And since the one hand, uh, the right hand and the left hand are connected, if the one actually weakens and the other is becoming uh, fatter, the whole body is not uh, um, lessened in uh, weight in that respect. So it is not a great, um, it's a, not a bad thing to have uh, public debt. In fact, uh, uh, Montesquieu later in his uh, Esprit des Lois actually uh, said that uh, public debt is a very bad thing, particularly if we owe it to foreigners. On the other hand, uh, there were people like uh, Bishop Barclay, where his queries suggested that uh, public debt would be a uh, gold mine, or uh, a very clever financier of the time, Isaac Pinto, also uh, uh, proclaimed the benefits of public debt. On the other hand, the stalwarts of political economy, and the best philosopher that came out from uh, the British Isles, David Hume. He was one of the most uh, virulent critics of public debt. In his uh, History of England, from the times of Julius Caesar to the abdication of James I, he said that it would be better if England or uh, ceded some of his uh, territory to other powers than having huge debt, because by some accident of history, you actually can have this territory go back to you, whereas in the terms of uh, public debt, uh, there is doom all around. Adam Smith, actually, where his fifth book of the Wealth of Nations in 1776 is totally devoted to public finance, is also one of these uh, people who actually also is against uh, public debt 
but in a sense, he's somehow surprised that even though the public debt of uh, his country increased, nevertheless, we had no serious consequences. These uh, views against debt uh, were um, actually ridiculed uh, in the 19th century by Thomas Babington Macaulay, who said that these doomsayers uh, have never seen their prophecies materialize, and the reason was that as uh, public debt grew, on the other hand, so did national income. So in a sense, what we should uh, be looking at is the ability of the body of the economy to uh, sustain the debt that is on it. Later on, we had attempts, for example, by Jeremy Bentham in his manual of political economy to get a true calculation of what goes on in uh, the relationship between debt and, uh, and growth. And in fact, uh, in most of the 19th century, uh, there is an understanding and a pragmatism that says that debt is here to stay. There's always these uh, ideas about, uh, about the description of debt. And the, in the early 19th century, we have the clearest voice regarding debt, that of David Ricardo. David Ricardo, in the supplement of the um, Encyclopedia Britannica under the nom de plume uh, triple E, suggested that there are three ways you can have debt on the, uh, dealing, with, dealing with the need to finance extra public expenditures, and by that uh, he meant mostly war. George R. Lewis's right that uh, public debt usually financed wars is either through taxes, through a sinking fund, or through issuing bonds. And Ricardo made the point that as a point of principle, it is really immaterial if you use taxes, sinking fund, or a bonds to finance this extra expenditure, although in his mind, taxes were the best way. And of course, this was very reasonable for a period where um, wars were actually conducted through mercenary armies, and uh, the average Englishman was reading the Times at his breakfast table and realized somewhere in the inner pages how the war uh, was successful or a failure. So Ricardo wanted to make sure that if it hurts your pocket instead of your body because it was fought by a mercenary army, taxes would be the best way to do that. Now, this was the um, case of what uh, later has been called by um, Barrow and actually James Buchanan, the so-called Ricardian equivalence, whether taxes and bonds are uh, equal means of financing the same expenditure. Uh, later in the 19th century, in the third um, German edition of uh, the first volume of Karl Marx's Capital, in a brilliant passage in the so-called Zogenante Ursprungliche Accumulation, that is the so-called primitive accumulation, he makes some uh, really bright points that the only thing that's really national in, in countries is debt. For example, in England, all national institutions are called royal, with the exception of debt that is called national. <laughs> and, and he described, actually, the creation of the Bank of England in the late 17th century, where it was a very a peculiar thing of a private bank that actually financed the government by issuing money that used to finance, sorry, to finance the government. So in a sense, he took money from the British public by both hands. And he also suggested that national debt was a major instrument of uh, primitive accumulation, where like a wizard's or a chauberer's uh, wand, he created money out of nothing. Now, in uh, most of the uh, 19th century, uh, usually uh, textbooks uh, were um, rather um, pragmatic and descriptive about the notion of public debt. Always caution was uh, suggested. And also what uh, we have uh, later on is a discussion about the role of the debt in a post-Keynesian world. Με μονότονη κανονικότητα το ρολόι έχει ναι. πει τα μαγικά του. Έχει τελειώσει ο χρόνος μου. Τώρα. Εδώ και <laughs> κάποιο λεπτό. Δεν το είχα. I'm sorry. I didn't talk about the interesting bit. Uh, anyway. 
<laughs> so, uh, we have the notion of uh, functional finance by Abba Lerner, uh, which was one of the brightest students of Keynes, whereas Keynes repudiated the idea that you can increase debt as much as it is needed because he was afraid of the political aspects of that. Now, to make uh, a few points uh, about that, I'm, I'm sorry that it took so much time. The thing is, at the moment, debt is the albatross around uh, the neck of the Greek economy. Not so much uh, because it is sustainable. I think at the moment it is not. Uh, also, it's a question of how you measure debt. Certainly, it's not the, the principal owed, it is how you discount this principle, and also we must get uncertainty out of the way. By, by saying that, we mean that we must have an arrangement, either through outright debt relief, which is the economically most logical uh, way to do it, which is politically the most infeasible, but also smoothing out fiscal cliffs and um, making certain that anyone who invests in, in Greece will not face the possibility of another adventure of possible Grexit or what have you, is necessary. In my view, the uh, key in, uh, in, uh, in actually addressing the issue of debt is growth. Usually, actually, almost never, in very few cases, you can have a reduction of the debt GDP ratio without actually an increase in the uh, denominator, which is GDP. And in order to do that, you have to take some serious measures. I would say I would agree with Tassos Yanitsis when he said some of these measures should be the uh, productive uh, reconstruction of the Greek economy, issues of innovation, something that would boost the real economy. I think that the idea that you make reforms that liberalize everything, deregulate everything, and this blind faith in the ability of the markets to create growth without any other help is uh, rather uh, misplaced. Uh, this is why I do not believe that a number of reforms, particularly of these reforms, are done sporadically and uh, spasmodically and uncoordinated will do any uh, good. For example, take the Greek labor market, for example. At the moment, the Greek labor market is a neoliberal's wet dream. On the other hand, this did not help the economy because on the one hand, you have a uh, still uh, oligopoly and imperfect competition in the product markets, and also the whole system of transmission mechanism, of uh, financial transmission mechanism, is totally broken. So, in a sense, we pretended that five billion was enough to recapitalize the banks. We know that there is a problem there. Uh, businesses, even though they managed to get payroll costs down because actually they fired people and uh, their wages are lower at the moment, the very high financial costs. So I, unless we address these issues and we have an economy which is uh, productive, there is no way we can uh, deal with the issue of the debt. And of course, and this is, uh, I don't want to say it, but I have to do, uh, to, to say that is that unless you have a major um, change uh, of thought in the issue of debt relief extension, I, I say that outright uh, debt relief is the preferable solution, a moratorium that would give the space of the to the economy to grow, because pretending that uh, going through this debtor's prison that enforces conditionalities that are not um, sustainable is not a solution. You cannot have more than 3% primary surplus and expect that this economy will grow to the extent that we can service our debt. In fact, this downward spiral will continue and exacerbated by the second crisis that uh, looms large in our economy, that of the uh, refugee uh, crisis, uh, I think we are not uh, in for a very good prospect. Thank you very much indeed.